Hey, welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. My name is Adrian Valdez. This is Living in West Michigan. This is going to be general, no matter where you're at. Uh, there may be some differences, but we're going to start a beginner course for first-time home buyers or people who just haven't done it in a while. Start here. This is section one, part one. This will be a uh, three-part series with multiple sections in each part. And I'm going to break it down so it's easy to digest and it's not so overwhelming. All right, let's get into it. So the first step on your journey to buying your home is going to be your credit check. What is a credit score? So what they're doing is they're essentially looking at how good you are at borrowing and repaying back money. The biggest reason why this is a major milestone is unless you have cap. And if you do, feel free to skip all the way up to section three. However, most people, it is not realistic to go ahead and pull hundreds of thousands of dollars to just purchase a home outright. I know I personally am not able to do that. So your credit, your credit score is going to tell the banks that they can in fact lend you money based off from some government standards. So check your credit regularly. And I don't mean go off and pull for a new credit card and see what they come back with you. So you can go to different sites like Equifax, TransUnion, you know, any of the three major credit bureaus, and once a year, you can get a free credit report. If it is too much to keep going back between them throughout the year, you can always do something like Credit Karma, or a lot of times your local credit unions, banks will have some kind of way to monitor credit. It is usually slightly off. They usually don't do all three credit scores, and they're not as quick to update as the actual credit bureaus. However, it is still a better idea and can tell you kind of what's showing up on your credit record and what you can do to improve it or whether you're in a position already to start looking at getting a loan. So my first tip here for getting your credit score up is just on-time payments. You got a current home loan. Do you have a car loan, a credit card, anything along those lines? You're going to want to make sure you're making those payments on time. What happens with the credit bureaus is every time you are over 30 days late, they hit you. Every time you're 60 days late, you get hit harder. And it goes on and on and on until those payments end up in collections, in which case they just tank your credit score, and you'll have to resolve that before you can get any kind of loan. So make sure you're making payments on time. I know it's difficult in certain situations. Not everybody is an ideal. You know, there's natural disasters. You have family obligations. Stuff happens last second unexpectedly, but try to make those payments because it really does improve your credit score. All right, card magic. So credit cards, yes, they improve your credit score depending on the length of time you have them, the balance that you're, the balance that's available to you, and how much you're using it, how often you pay back. So does opening up a brand new credit card instantly improve your credit? Probably not. But with regular on-time payments and not exceeding typically about 30% is the guideline I've been given by most lenders uh, of the total balance. So for instance, if you have a $1,000 total credit line on your credit card, don't exceed $300. Another good tip, if you don't even want to go that far, is, is to get a credit card with rewards points and just use it to buy groceries. Fill up your gas tank, pay your Netflix subscription, Whatever it is, just something you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and just pay it off the second it pulls from that card. It'll show regular payments. It'll improve your credit score because you will have zero late payments. It'll show activity on the card, and it'll be a great tool to utilize to increase that score. Can't get a credit card. Um, you've had some rough times. You're in a patch. Totally understand. I've been there. So the next step for instead of a standard credit card, I would suggest doing a prepaid credit card. So these are things like what I personally used was cred.ai, but it's essentially a debit card. You fill it up, you can't exceed that balance, and then what it reports is that the balance of your credit line is however much money you have saved inside of that account. It's essentially just a checking account. Um, some of them have fees, so make sure you know what you're signing up for. But it's a great way to get your credit score up. There's not usually a requirement because they're not actually lending you money. They're just letting you load money up on the card and spend it however you see fit. 
accounts. So don't just go off and close out your old credit card accounts or loans or whatever have you. You're going to want to talk to a professional first, whether it be credit repair, a lender, whoever. Because what's going to wind up happening is these old accounts show a long history of credit. And those can build up your credit score. It could be a significant contribution to how high your score currently is. On the flip side, sometimes when things have been in collections for so long, at least here in Michigan, it kind of becomes a moot point. So before you even start paying stuff off, I would talk to a professional and get their opinion on what's worth you paying off to get to where you need to be. All right. Negotiate. So this is a hard one. But what you can do is when you pull that information, let's say you got three items in collections. You had a car repoed or just a debit card that went delinquent or, or sorry, credit card or what have you. Well, what you can do is you can go ahead and pull up your credit file and underneath there you should have the contact information or a point of contact for whoever owns your debt. So you can call them and say, hey, I'm willing to pay you X amount of money or the full amount if you wipe those late payments off my record. And they have the possibility to do that. Um, get it in writing. Make sure that it's not just a verbal agreement. You want something in writing before you make that payment because once you make the payment, they don't have a whole lot of obligation to uh, hold up their end of the bargain. It can be time consuming. It can be stressful but it can make a huge difference. Another piece, even if they're not willing to wipe it off your record, just making those payments, a lot of times these companies that buy your debt buy it for pennies on the dollar. And so sometimes you can come in and say, hey, I can pay you half if you just wipe my debt. And you, a lot of times they'll just wipe your debt for a discount in order to just make a profit on what they bought your debt for. All right. Authorized users. So this one's a little tricky. Um, it doesn't always work now. Some of the uh, credit companies are getting a little wiser to it. But essentially, if you have a friend or family that absolutely you trust them, they trust you, what you can do is you say, hey, I know my buddy Mark here has a credit card with a $20,000 balance. It's been good. For, he's been in good standing, never late payment in five years. Ask him if he'd add you as an authorized user. What you would do is you call the credit card company and ask to add you as an authorized user. You don't need a copy of the card. They'll send one out. You can just have whoever that individual is submit to themselves. Say, I don't want access to your account. Um, but what it'll do is it'll add the entire history of that card onto your credit record. It can be tricky because that can affect your debt to income. So make sure that whoever is uh, adding you on here doesn't have a maxed out card, um, doesn't have a bunch of late payments, et cetera, et cetera, because those will tank your credit score instead. Now, once you do this, it takes about three to four months for that to show up on your credit record. Again, I'm not a professional when it comes to credit repair. I just happen to be a realtor who works hand in hand with a lot of lenders, and I've seen this be effective. Now, talk to a professional. Now, in a later section, we're going to be going over kind of what to look for in a professional, where you should be looking, um, and some of the benefits of working with them outside of this. However, talking to a professional for getting your credit repaired can be super helpful. Credit repair companies do exist, but you got to be careful who you're working with. My primary suggestion is talk to your lender, talk to your credit union, your mortgage broker, whoever would be writing your home loan because they have a deep-seated interest in getting your credit score up so they can get you a loan. They're commission-based typically, and they get paid when they get you a loan. So instead of paying hundreds of dollars a month, they'll just give you a guideline, here's what you need to do, and then you can call them to ask questions as you go through. All right, well, that's going to be it for Section 1. It was great seeing you guys. I hope you stick around for Section 2, Debt to Income. If you have any questions or anything was confusing or I got anything wrong, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I love feedback. Um, if you want to work with a realtor over here in West Michigan, my contact here is up on the screen. If you want to find a local realtor, feel free to reach out to me too, and I'd be happy to find somebody who's a, somebody with a great reputation and get you in touch with them. 
All right. I'll see you guys next time.